It is definitely a relevant subject to talk about because, you know, we mentioned 40 million records at this stage in your career. I think you definitely were hitting 20 million records worldwide and yet parting ways with a manager. And, you know, how is it that you can have 20 million records on the board and, and not be paid right? It's amazing. Mm. I mean, for us, we, we sit here and we're like, yeah, Blondie, Debbie, Harry, Chris Stein, superstars. But there's definitely been low points where you've had platinum discs on the wall, yeah, I imagine, sure. and... and even funnier was when Heart of Glass was at number one, um, we were on suspension, which means that we hadn't filled the obligations of our contract. So we had a number one record, and we were also on suspension. I mean, the, the whole thing of it was mad. It was really mad. Well, it it'll, it'll, the, 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 goes back to the surf mentality. There used to be this... The Brill Building. Does anybody know what that was? It was the. It was a building in New York that where all the old songwriters would collect and you know write and do their work out of, and it, and it all it kind of represented the corporate aspect of the music businesses at the time with publishing, meaning paper publishing, physical objects and such and yeah it was kind of a surf mentality where where you you were working for the record company rather than with them certainly yeah. and i mean it might be an oversimplified question but if you could impart one bit of knowledge about you know what you've learned from the bad bits oh we well, just don't trust anybody <laughs> I mean, you know, what the fuck i mean you could that, I mean, that was the big the big uh, thing was having somebody come along and go, you you can trust me, son, and do that thing, and then that then they, and you're fucked from there on, you know. So. Well, there are. I mean, there is more information now, so that's, yeah, that's very good. Yeah, you know, I mean, at, at that point, you couldn't. The guy we had for a lawyer went on to write textbooks that are used in entertainment law classes, and I don't even think there were entertainment law classes in the 70s, you know, it just didn't exist, so. But so you can imagine how people like before us really, you know, never saw, I mean, you hear stories like that all the time, right? Artists from the 60s and the 50s mm -hmm. that never saw a nickel.